Thank you for being here, Lord. Thank you for another day's journey. Thank you for another day in life, dear Lord. Thank you. Now, Lord, give our sisters here, dear Lord. They will all be gone on Sunday, dear Lord. Be with Sister Cheryl and the treatment that she's going through. Be with Sister Shelley as she goes to Southern California to bury her aunt. Be with Sister Yolanda as she goes to the Bay Area tomorrow to bury her aunt. And then, Lord, give me strength on Friday. Give me the words to say, dear Lord, as we prepare to lay into the rest. Touch today, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Anoint us one more time. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and thank God. We're back. We're here again for the second installment in our new series about Romans. As you know, we did nearly two years for the book of Acts, Praxis, the extraordinary acts of exemplary men or exemplary acts of extraordinary men and women of God. So now we've moved on to the book of Acts and we're in the second installment, which is gonna come from the first chapter, verses eight through 15. I know some people are saying, go ahead and hit 16. No, that's an altogether different subject and sermon all into itself. We're going eight to 15 in the first chapter of the book of Romans. Romans, first chapter eight through 15, pro Romanos to the Romans, the epistle of Paul the Apostle to Rome. And so we are getting ready to start Romans 1, 8 through 15. And we have, we have to have a subject. We're gonna go take it from verse 15. So as much as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel and some other versions of the Bible that will say, I am eager to preach the gospel. So that's where we're going to derive our subject from. I am ready. I am eager to preach the gospel. I ask that question. Am I ready to tell the world who my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is? So we begin with verse 8. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world world. So here we have an example of a constant prayer. And, and if you're going to really, whatever it is that you're going to do in life, whether it's in your secular life, whether it's in your personal life, whether it's in your Christian life, there must be a constant prayer about you at all times. The Bible tells us, Jesus says that man ought to always pray and not faint, that man ought to always pray and not dissipate, that man ought to always pray and not become a shrinking violent, that a man must, a person must, a woman must, a person must always pray and not faint. For I am, thank my God, through who? Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for, for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Just in a small amount of time that Paul had been on this earth, since our Lord and Savior had been on this earth, it was somewhere around 23, 24, 25 years the world was already hearing, the known world was already hearing about our Lord and Savior Jesus. It didn't matter what the culture was. It didn't matter how, what the people were doing in the uh, Mongolian areas. It didn't matter what people were doing in the area of Persia. It didn't matter what people were doing south of the Sahara. It didn't matter what people were doing in Northern Africa or Central Africa. It didn't matter what was going on in Gaul, what we today talk about as France. It didn't matter what was going on in Britannia, where now is Ireland and Wales and Great Britain and the Scandinavian countries, the Germanic tribes over up northern from Mongolia up where we now know as Russia. It didn't matter what was going on, but in the known world, Jesus was being preached Jesus' name was being bantied about, and brothers and sisters, just like people knew about him then, we've got to tell people today. We have to be eager to tell people who Jesus is. It is dire. It is important. Throughout the whole world, people are learning about 
about Jesus. There are people who are dying because of that. And, that's the, and that's, that speaks to the arrogance of American Christians today. We act like ain't nothing else going on but us. We're just trying to figure out how we're going to get our money on, how we're going to get this on, how we're going to get that on. We need to be praying for your fellow brothers and sisters who are dying in Korea, who are dying in China, who are dying in Nigeria, who are dying in Saudi Arabia, who are dying in the Sudan for the cause of Christ. You've got to be aware of who our Lord and Savior is and telling the world who Jesus is. Hallelujah. I remember... I had wrote this down. It was from Tectius, the Roman historian. Now, Rome was not an easy place that Paul was in right now. And we're going to talk about that. Um, he said, in Rome, in the city of Rome, flows all things that are vile and abominable and are encouraged. Think about that. A vile and an abominable place where things that are not right are encouraged. It sounds an awful lot like what's going on in the world today. We live in a vile world. We live in a world where anything and everything goes. And if you even mention Jesus in certain segments in certain parts of the society, people don't want to hear it. They don't, they don't want it. They want to do what they want to do. They want to believe what they want to believe. They want to uh, say what they want to say, but brothers and sisters, still be ready to eagerly teach and preach the word of the truth and the living God. And I want to throw one more thing in there. Be ready to be ready, be able, and be eager to live what the word of God is saying. Some people don't want to do that. They want to do what they want to do. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah today, but live for Jesus. Let me say that one more time. Live for Jesus. Well, I'm going to say it one more time. Live for some of you Christians. Live. Stop having Sunday morning uh, Christianity, but every day of your life, live for Christ. Hallelujah today. Hallelujah. Verse 9. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit and the gospel of his son, that without ceasing, I make mention of you always in prayer. Who do we serve? We, should, we serve God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. We serve God. I don't serve any other God. And here it is. All these people now that are saying there's all these roads to God. Stop believing that. There's one sister who's very wealthy. There's one sister who's very well known. If I say the first name of her word or her name, everybody's going to know who I'm talking about. But you go back and tell her what I said. Baby, there are no a whole bunch of roads to God. It's, uh, it is God. It is the God of the Bible. It's not the God of Buddhism. It's not the good of Jainism. It's not the good of, of uh, Islam. It's not the God of all these different New Age movements. You see these people with these coexist bumpers on their uh, cars. No, it is the God of the Bible. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The same God that parted the Red Sea. The same God that, that gave the, the little David the strength to defeat giant Goliath. That's the same God, and that's the God we serve. The God who sent his son down through 42 generations, who came to this life, to this earth, and died on the cross for us, shed his blood for us, Oh, but that wasn't the whole story. It was put in the borrowed tomb and got up on the third day morning. What? With all power in his hands. That's who we serve. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that's who I serve. With my spirit in the gospel. Now, put a pin in verse 9 for just a moment. And go back to verse 4 in Romans, the first chapter, verse 4. And I declare to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead. There was holiness there. People today don't want holiness anymore. I hear whole sermons, very little Jesus in it, very little God in it, and not even any Holy Ghost in it. And you've got some that don't even preach out the Bible anymore. They just get up and start pontificating. Yes, I said that word, pontificating on whatever is in the back of their mind. But it's about the Word of God. The Bible says line upon line, 
line upon line, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. It has to be about the word of God. Hallelujah today. Hallelujah. So, his son that was made without ceasing, I mentioned of you always in my prayers. If Paul did not have the Holy Ghost in him, if he wasn't walking in holiness, if he wasn't in constant prayer, he wouldn't have been able to do the things he needed to do in the city of Rome. Because I told you, Rome was no joke. It was no joke being in the Roman Empire. And there are people now who want to go back to the way that was. There are people in the world that don't like the American way of life. They don't like our laws. They don't like the fact that we're uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We want to go back to a draconian. That means uh, where one person will give, we can take the thumbs up and you can live, put the point of thumbs down on you, and you could die. But Rome was no joke. It took over 300 years to make Christianity the uh, religion of Rome. And while all that was going on, thousands and thousands upon people, and some people have even suggested that it was in the millions of believers in Jesus Christ from 60 AD until 380 AD died. And they died in a horrible, horrible way. In 251 Diocesis, he made Christians uh, stop following the cross and made them follow uh, sacrifices of idols. Today, if somebody walked in your church and, or walked in your home and said, you've got to start following sacrifices and idols, what would you do? In 260, Valentinian punished Christians if they did not perform, if they didn't bow to certain statutes or follow certain doctrines. In 2, 3, 11, Diocletian persecuted Christians, destroying churches and uh, destroying holy books. There are people today that want to, that would to take, I got two Bibles sitting up here that would love to take it and destroy it. Let me show you, give you a better example. I have a 26 um, parallel version of the Bible somewhere around in this church. I have to believe it's here. When we were refurbishing this church a couple of years ago, my Bible disappeared and it made me, I, I, I suffered grief. Bible people said, was just a Bible. No, that was a great Bible. That was the Bible. Uh, man, so many Bible for almost nothing at the National Baptist Convention 32 years ago. And it was, I loved that Bible. It was the Word, plus it was the Word of God. But do you know there are people today that would want to destroy your Bible? Take your phones and take the Bible apps out of your phone. Take Gateway out of your Bible. There are people that would want to do that today. Don't you understand how precious it is to have the Word of God? Hallelujah. 337, Constantine uh, sanctioned religious freedom. So that took some of the problem of some of the, um, how can I say this? some of the persecution off of the church, but because the persecution was great. In 367, Gratin uh, sent further the freedoms that Constantine had started. And 380, Theodosius made Christianity the official religion in the Roman Empire, but that was 300 years. Thousands, and I said earlier, possibly millions of people lost their lives for the cause of Christ. Can you imagine that? There were some people that were hung. There were some people that were stoned to death. There were those that were fed to the animals. And let me elaborate on that point. Not only fed, can you imagine being put in a pit with hungry foxes? Say you got four or five hungry foxes and somebody throws you in a pit that you can't get out of. You're not going to get out of it because you're going to be eaten to death. Or wild, hungry dogs fed to those dogs. Hallelujah. That, was, that must have been something. Taken and thrown to wolves. These are people like you or me that were Christians, that were followers of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You had some people that were beheaded. You had some people that were crucified. 
not as bad as our Lord, but they were still crucified. You ought to read what happened to Spartacus before the time of Christ when they took 6,000 of his followers and uh, 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 crucified him. Some of them they set on fire. They said you could see him from miles around at night coming into the city of Rome. The Romans were nobody to joke with. They were nobody to play with. They picked people to be put in a pit to be torn apart by an animal that was different from being eaten at it by an animal. You had some people that were killed by swords. Here's my preaching sword right here. Can you imagine a big strong man taking you right now and just whacking you with it? Whack, 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 until you were dead. Maybe it may take, and you see we on TV, then we go like that, people know. Sometimes it would take maybe 30 or 40 or 50 of these whacks to kill you, to destroy you because of your faith in Christ. You had some people that were killed by spears. You had some people that were thrown into the river to drown. And you had another way where they had some people taken in a sack and were sewn up in a sack and with, and with a, a snake or a fox or a snake and a fox and a chicken sewn up and thrown into a river. If the chicken didn't pluck you to death, if the fox didn't reach you, if the snake didn't, you would drown. So what it meant was you weren't coming out of that river alive. Hallelujah. Today. Yes, some people that were trampled by horses. Can you imagine being put in, in a pit somewhere where a bunch of wild horses, you were thrown down, and the horses trampled you to death. Hallelujah. All for the cause of Christ. You had some people that were literally beaten to death by the hands of a strong Roman soldier or a mercenary just beat you, beat you. Have you ever seen a person beaten to death? A lot of times on TV we say, oh, wow, he's dead. No, you would be so disfigured by the time it stopped. If the disfigurement didn't shock your heart and cause you to have a heart attack, you were beaten from the bruises and the loss of blood and the, the contortion that would go on in your body. All for the cause of Christ. Sometimes it was bows and arrows. Sometimes you were thrown off of a building. Hallelujah. Sometimes you were thrown in a dungeon and starved to death. Would you be able to stand? Would you be able to be the eager? Would you be ready to go for the cause of Christ? If these are the things that you have to be faced with today, there are people today that would want to do that to us because they don't see what's going on. They think that the Bible says the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. It's foolishness unto them. Every time somebody now just about says something, it was a famous actor that talked about how another one, how the devil got into another one, and he was attacked for even saying the first, first thing out the person's mouth is, the devil doesn't exist. Oh, but I wish I could. I, that's a whole other sermon all and unto itself. So being in the Roman Empire was no joke. Verse 10, making requests if by some means now at last I may find a way in the will of God to come to you. Making a request, meaning that I'm going to find a way, no matter, even though he was un, under house arrest, he was still going to tell the people about Jesus. If you go back to the book of Acts, go back to the book of Praxis, the 28th chapter, verse 30, then Paul dwelt two years in his own rented house and received all who came to him. Listen to what he did, preaching the kingdom of God. What else did he do? Teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ. And how did he do that? With confidence. No one forbidding him. So he was ready to do all that he needed to do for the Lord. Verse 11. For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift, so that you may be established. Now what's interesting about verse 11. 11. It says, I may in part meta di mine, meta di mine. Now, here it is. When I grew up in a pastor's home, my earliest remembrance of the people that my father surrounded himself were preachers and pastors. So, at one or two years old, outside of my mother's relatives, 
the other people that were church people and preachers. My father's pastor was not only born in the 20th century, he was born in the 19th century. So he was already an older man. And my father would go around him and he, would, he was old enough to be my father's father and he would impart things on him. Young preachers, get yourselves, stop running around trying to figure out how you go get a, get a, a Range Rover or a Bentley and all that. Get you around some older preachers and let them impart some things in you. Let them tell you some of their stories. You may think we're old, you may think we're corny, but some of their old stories will help you out on this road after some of us are no longer here. I can remember my father going around older preachers. I can remember going with him, going around, driving him around, uh, singing to them, and they would impart certain things on him, this letter of Diamani. So here it is. And the, the end of that verse says that you may be established, in other words, so that you can grow stronger and stronger and stronger in the Lord. Find yourself somebody that can lay knowledge on you. I can remember as a young preacher, I would work all day long on Sundays here at Unity with my dad. 11 o'clock Sunday school and then at a 3 o'clock program and at night I would get in the car and I would drive to Oakland, California where I would go and sit under Dr. Carl Anderson he was a man that when he, when he passed had preached had pastored 54 years in Oakland and I enjoyed those little mini talks that he would give me I would enjoy the wisdom that he imparted on me is that sometimes we want to think we know everything that there is to know, but sometimes get yourself with an older man of God and sit and learn and who he was. That's one of the things that Paul wanted to do was impart to people, impart to preachers, impart to people that had to follow what it was that we do as ministers and Christians. Now, if anyone be unaware, brethren, I often planned to come to you, but was hindered until now that I might have some fruit amongst you, just as amongst other Gentiles, fruit, caprios, he had people that had come under and followed who Jesus is that have become believers and followers of Jesus fruit. That's one of the things that we ought to be wondering. How much fruit are we gathering for Jesus? How much fruit are we sharing and telling the world about for Jesus? How many people are we praying get full of the fire and Holy Ghost for Jesus? It isn't all about just having a church full of people, but we should be concerned about people being having fruit of and for the Lord in these dangerous times in which we live in, in these uncaring times in which we live in, in these unfeeling times in which we live in. I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. That meant that Paul was going to tell everybody who he dealt with, those that were Roman citizens, those that were Greek citizens, those that were Nubians, those that were Ethiopians, those that were from Persia, those that were from the Germanic tribes, those that were from Britannia, anybody that would listen, anybody that was going to pray over, anybody to pray that they accepted Jesus as the Lord and Savior of their life, both wise and to the unwise. You see, a lot of people today want to turn their nose up at people. We don't have time to turn their nose up at anybody. Sometimes God will take that person that you think is the corniest person in the world and turn them into a superstar for him telling the world who Jesus is. Verse 15, so as much as I am also eager, so as much I am ready to preach the gospel to those of you, Paul, who are in Rome. I just told you it was not easy being in Rome in those days, but Paul was 
going to keep on telling people who Jesus was. He was going to keep on telling the world that Jesus was real and he's real and he's real in my soul today. Hallelujah. I'm going to keep on telling people here in the 21st century. People may not want to hear it. People may say that's old fashioned. People will say, I don't want to hear it. People will say, man, maybe you need to get with the times. I'm going to get with the Bible. I'm going to stay with the Bible. I'm going to keep on telling the world that Jesus is real. I'm going to keep on telling He died for our sins. He shed his precious blood for us. I'm going to keep on telling people he's real. I'm going to keep on telling people there's only one name given in the heavens by which men shall be saved at the name of Jesus. I'm going to keep on living for Jesus. I'm going to keep on walking for Jesus. I'm going to keep on teaching for Jesus. I'm going to keep on sharing the world. I'm going to keep on being eager to tell the world. I'm going to keep on telling the world that Jesus is real. That is real. That is real. That is real.